What happened to Jefferson Airplane? Marty Bellin, a singer who was born and raised in San Francisco and was 23 years old at the time, decided to form a band to perform the fusion of folk and rock at the beginning of 1965. He put money into turning a pizza place on Fillmore Street into the Matrix, a venue with 100 seats, and he started picking band members from the musicians at the Drinking Gourd Folk Club. Paul Kantner, a rhythm guitarist and singer, recommended Jorman Cal Cohen, a lead guitarist and singer. The band now had six members, and one of them is Signe Tolley, a strong female vocalist. Cal Conan came up with the unusual name after being referred to as Blind Thomas Jefferson Airplane by a friend about the blues singer Blind Lemon Jefferson. On August 13, 1965, and began making consistent appearances at the club. As a result of favorable press coverage, record labels became interested in Jefferson Airplane. The band was being courted by several labels by September. Harvey was fired in October and Jack Cassidy took his place. The band signed with RCA Victor Records on November 15, 1965, and their first single, It's No Secret, came out in February 1966. Spence became increasingly unreliable as his desire for drugs increased, and Anderson gave birth to a daughter in May of 66. Spencer Dryden, a session drummer, took his place in June. On August 15, 1966, Jefferson Airplane put out their first album, Jefferson Airplane Takes Off. During its 11 weeks on the Billboard chart, the album only reached a peak of number 128 in sales. At this point, Anderson left the group because she was so committed to her family. In the middle of October 1966, Grace Slick, the lead singer of the rock band The Great Society from San Francisco, joined Jefferson Airplane. She brought two songs from The Great Society repertoire with her, Somebody to Love, a rock song, and White Rabbit, a ballad. Surrealistic Pillow, Jefferson Airplane's second album, featured recordings of both songs. In January 1967, RCA selected Spence's My Best Friend as the album's advanced single and did not release either of those songs. The first Jefferson Airplane single to feature Grace Slick as lead vocalist was Somebody to Love, and it helped Surrealistic Pillow climb the charts in the final week of March. By early May, both the collection and single were in the top 40 of their separate charts. In addition to touring, Jefferson Airplane began recording a new album. They played at the Monterey International Pop Festival on June 17, 1967, which was famous for introducing numerous new San Francisco rock bands. The 1968 documentary Monterey Pop featured Today and High Flying Bird, two songs from their show. However, AM Top 40 Radio became weary of a group that had scored a hit with a song widely criticized for its drug references, which limited their commercial appeal. Due to the band's prominence, Kantner's new single, The Ballad of You and Me and Puneel, reached number 42. The ascent of FM radio, drawn to longer cuts and the sort of trial work The Gathering was beginning to do, provided them with a better approach to uncovering their music. Bathing at Baxter's, their third album did not do as well as their previous album. It reached the top 20 but did not go gold. A new Jefferson Airplane single, written and sung by Slick, was released by RCA in the spring of 1968, after Cantner's Watch Her Ride which was released as a single from after Bathing at Baxter's stalled at number 61. The band's fourth album, Crown of Creation, included the song Greasy Heart, which reached the top 10 eventually went gold. The concert album Bless Its Pointed Little Head, which was released in February 1969, documented the band's popularity on stage. Volunteers, the band's fifth studio album, was released in October of 69, and the title track entered the minor singles chart. 
The band performed at the disastrous Rolling Stones free concert in California on December 6, 1969. The performance was captured in the 1970 documentary Gimme Shelter. In its familiar configuration, Jefferson Airplane released one more single in 1970, the non-charting marijuana anthem Mexico. However, the turn of the 1970s brought significant changes to the band's sound. In 1970, they released the worst of Jefferson Airplane, which quickly went gold and was later certified platinum. Blows Against the Empire, Paul Kantner's debut solo album, featured the majority of Jefferson Airplane members in addition to a variety of other musical friends. In August 1971, Jefferson Airplane's sixth studio album, Bark, was released by Grunt Records. Cal Conan, Covington, and Cassidy's Pretty As You Feel, later given as a single, gave the band its last place in the Hot 100 at number 60 right on time in 1972. In the mid-1970s, the band turned out to be progressively distracted with its side activities. Hot Fish delivered their most memorable studio effort, Burgers, in February 1972. Gunfighter, a duo album, was released in December 1971 by Kantner and Slick. Covington left the band in April 1972, and veteran drummer Johnny Barbada took his place. Long John Silver, the group's seventh studio album, debuted in the top 20 and went gold within six months. They added singer slash multi instrumentalist David Free to the accompanying tour. In September 22, 1972, the tour came to an end at the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco, which marked the end of Jefferson Airplane. Cal Conan and Cassidy resumed their hot tuna performances. Baron Von Tolbooth and the Chrome Nun, a trio album by Kantner, Slick, and Freeberg, and Manhole, Slick's debut solo album, were recorded. After that, Kantner and Slick started a new band called Jefferson Starship. In the spring of 1973, they released a second live album called 30 Seconds Over Winterland. In the spring of 1974, a collection of stray tracks was released as Early Flight. Snort gave the accumulation flight log from 1966 to 1976 toward the beginning of 1977, filling the two LPs with tracks by Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, and different other side project acts. Fulton Street 2400 in 1987, a set with two discs was called An Anthology. These albums all achieved sufficient sales to reach the charts. In the 1970s and 1980s, the various members of Jefferson Airplane engaged in a lot of conflicts with one another, an old manager, and through solo endeavors and group affiliations. In 1999, however, Kantner, Slick, Calconan, and Cassidy who with manager Bill Thompson still owned the rights to the name Jefferson Airplane, brought in Ballin, who had sold out his share in the group in 1971 and reunited as Jefferson Airplane for a tour and album. This was all cleared up by the end of the 1980s. From August 18th to October 7th, the tour was well received. However, Jefferson Airplane's album only achieved modest success. The band then resumed their inactivity. Slick went away, and as Hot Tuna, Cal Conan and Cassidy resumed their performances. In the end, Canada revived the Jefferson Starship moniker, performing songs by Jefferson Airplane and occasionally including Ballin and even Slick. RCA continued to release archival recordings with the box set Jefferson Airplane Loves You from 1992, and the concert recording Live at the Fillmore East from 1998 being its most interesting releases. Kantner, who was at 74, passed away in San Francisco on January 28, 2016, the same day that Anderson, the original airplane singer, passed away at her home in Oregon. Marty passed away on September 27, 2018 in Tampa, Florida at the age of 76. And that's what happened to Jefferson Airplane. 
Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me some facts about the band that I failed to mention. And if you want me to go more in detail about Jefferson Starship and then Starship later on, let me know and I will be able to do that in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.